Howdy folks, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today what I want to show you folks is how we rod out a cement wall and bring it out flush to sheetrock. This particular wall is uh, inset about a half inch to an inch in some spot. Then we're a little proud right here. This actually passes the sheetrock and so they want it to be a bedroom, want it to look nice. And they said, can you feather everything in? And I said, absolutely. What we're going to do guys is is show you how we do that, but there's a little prep work that's necessary before you do all that. Now we've had to wire brush the wall, we've applied Weldcrete. Weldcrete is a bonding agent, this blue stuff here. A lot of people call me and say, Kirk, I can't find Larson's uh, Weldcrete. Where do you get it? Well, you don't have to use that. You can use um, uh, Home Depot or Lowe's brands. They have Sika is a good product here. This is a concrete bonding agent. A lot of folks don't use a bonding agent for plaster, but we do all the time. It's um, cheap insurance. Make certain that it bonds well, plus it removes all the dust that a wire brush might miss. Anyhow, what we're going to do is, and the, the contractor said, what are you going to use, a 2x4 to screed it? Now, guys, I can put my mud on here and use a 2x4 and screed it like this. That's for you folks uh, who may not have such tools as a Darby or a straight edge. When I was union, we'd use the straight edges on uh, banks, things where, buildings where they were going to put thin sets, say 10 foot to 20 foot uh, straight edges. One man on the bottom, one man on the top, and you, one guy holds it and you make a wall true and plumb. That way you could set tile on it. It's supposed to be true and plumb every 10 feet by no more than an eighth inch. Anyway, this is a piece of cake what we're doing here. So we're going to use a five minute mud. And how do I, normally I don't show this particular product, but we were at Home Depot today getting a five minute mud. What's five minute mud? Five minute mud means you got five minutes to put it on. It's kind of like fix all. When you mix that stuff, you better be fast and better know how to do it. And you also got to know how to mix it. Jay's going to mix me up some. The five minute mud is to get me, um, give me some depth here. If I use a 20 minute mud, which I usually use, I, can be, I could uh, plaster all this in. I'm kind of standing around waiting for that mud to dry. So the five minute mud, I'm just going to skim these real quick and bring it out to my fullness. Then I'm going to switch to a 20 and do the finesse part. Jay will mix it and I'll show you another thing too, guys. If you have a dirty bucket or dirty tools, a dirty uh, mixing paddle, that five minute mud is now one minute mud because you've compromised the integrity of the mix. Everything got to be perfect, the tools, in order to get five minutes out of it. All right, guys, Jason is going to mix some of this five minute mud. I had to go to Home Depot today. It's about the only place I know that sells five minute mud. My main supplier, West Coast, when I asked Tommy, how come you don't sell five minute anymore? He said, Kirk, you're the only one that buys that five minute stuff. It sets so fast, no one can use it. But on a job like this, it's perfect for me. In the back of Jay, I've got some 20 minute bags, which we're gonna use after we get this done. Anyhow, I thought I'd point that out, guys. Uh, we'll see you in a few seconds when I'm actually putting the wall, the mud on the walls, Jason and I. All right, guys, what does five minute mud mean? You got five minutes and before, a little while ago, our first setup, here's five minute mud. Jay set the camera up, I lost it. That's how fast it's set. He brought it in, poured it on. My first three scoops, it was gone. So I don't advise anybody to use five minute mud unless you're doing a little bitty patch, say like uh, a couch hit a piece of fern, uh, hit the wall and you wanna put that together, you could use five minute mud. But it just sets way too fast for a big job unless you have the time and to know how to do it. Right now, Jay said, well, we can use 20 minute mud here and the, the concrete's sucking the moisture right out anyway. But I said, yeah, but this stuff here, I use it. It wakes me right up because it takes so much pressure. I was half asleep when I got here this morning, even after a cup of coffee, I'm wide awake right now using this stuff, guys. So, anyway, we're gonna finish this up and we're gonna break out the 20 minute mud. Okay, guys. We are done with the five minute stuff. We got a lot of slobbers here. Now I'm using the relaxing stuff, this 20 minute. And when I take it, I get 20 minute mud will cover these big gaps here. What we do is we want to squeeze it, squeeze it in those gaps like so. And because we're feathering a lot of stuff in, 
I'm just going to put a fat coat right here and where it needs it. That's okay. We just, if it starts to hang down like that, we just go over and over it. This wall is going to take another hour to hit. But while I'm here, let me introduce to you folks Mike, the GC, who's built all this. He specializes in electricity, plumbing, you name it. Why don't you tell him what you do, Mike? Hi there, Michael Rudd here. I own Rudd Kitchen and Bath. Uh, don't please don't be deceived by the names. Uh, I am a licensed general contractor. I do electrical. I do plumbing. I do a little bit of sheetrock when I can. Uh, my specialty is tile and tile repair. If you've uh, uh, if you've got some uh, some cabinet work in your kitchen, you're looking for a countertop or a backsplash. You're looking to get your shower redone. You're looking for a uh, for a bathroom remodel. Go ahead and give me a call. I'm at 510-703-1657. That's Red Kitchen and Bath. Thank you very much for watching. All right. This guy's seen his work too. It's excellent. Anyhow, what this 20 minute mud, this gives me a chance to relax and I can just play with it, play with it. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to fill up this here. We're almost there. Another, another uh, half a bucket. By the way, one bag makes half a bucket, guys, with that, uh, those 20 pound bags. It's, it's not a lot to those little bitty bags. So anyhow, I'm going to show you a little bit more when I start to rod this. Okay, guys. Stuff, even this 20 minute mud is starting to get hard. Now we're just coat after coat after coat, guys. And one of the things, uh, I get asked as far as homeowners that go, man, that's, uh, how are you going to get all those lines out? As soon as this starts to get stiff, guys, we just put our trowel on edge, like so, and we get the lines out. But for right now, what we want to do is just build it out, build it out. And we, if you drop stuff and you pull up clinkers and the scratch coat, that's not a big deal. And the finish, then we get yelled at if we leave clinkers like that. Anyhow, I'm at the last, I'm at the last hawk full. We're going to let this set a few minutes and play with it. And one more skim, and we're going to be done with this, guys. Okay, guys, let me show you something, too. Uh, if you're good with your hand tools, you can just use your... This is my, my trowel. I can finish this off with my trowel. For those of you who are watching and say, man, how are you going to rod this right here? I know how you rod this. You put a 2 by 4 up and just pull it, but how are you going to rod the bottom if you have no template? I'll show you guys a quick way. Kind of like, again, I don't need to rod all this. I can use my tools to match it. But if you folks watching and say, Kirk, I can't do that, I'll show you a simple way to do it. So you take a, a Darby, and now you just you put a little about a foot on here. Now, if you put a foot on here, now your rod on the bottom is, is close enough. So you put a foot on here, keep it on there, and just rod it. We call it fat and ugly, uh, working outside, and you throw some excess where it's hollow. Again, you put, put a foot on, on the straight part and just rot it like so. And if you've got some excess mud, you take it, put it where you need it. Then here, pull it straight up. Pull it. If you want that wall true and plumb. If you don't want it true and plumb, you, you don't have to go that route. But, Anyway, that's for you folks who aren't very, very good with the hand tools. You can use these rods. All right, guys, we've got a lot of elbow grease on this. This part's all done all the way up. We feathered into the sheet rock, whereas the concrete was a little wee bit proud. And now I've got everything except the last six inches. I figured I'd show you guys this part because these plaster compounds, uh, you can bring them back to life. So I'm bringing this back to life just a little bit. Uh, when you bring it back to life now, now it takes a lot of muscle. And you guys, if you watch anything I do, you know I'd rather use skill rather than muscle. Anyway, sometimes I don't have that luxury, like right now. So now I'm going to take my, my trowel on edge. I'm going to use both hands. And basically what I'm doing is I'm going as hard as I can to bring this back to life and get, some, get rid of some of the cat faces. If it's, if it's not too dry, you could use one hand and get it. But if it's somewhat dry, like this is pretty dry. It's a hot day and it's really hot in here. I'll just use two hands like one more time. I'll show you guys. Take, take it, put both hands and put this trial on edge. 
like that. And it'll take it off a little excess. And as you're taking off excess, that's my fat. That fat right there, I can find a place I need some fat. Say like down here and just take it and use that fat right there. So anyway, guys, you see where we're, we're at with this, even where I got over the sheetrock. Take that on edge, get rid of that fat. Take that fat someplace and use it. Anyway, guys, that's our so-called show for you today. Uh, my name is Kirk, Jason on the camera. And as usual, folks, we thank you for watching. We'll see you guys on the next one.